Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, we have more support for next-gen Ryzen. RTX 3000 GPU stock is worse than we thought. The first 10 nanometer desktop CPU is seen, and AMD's Ryzen 5000 CPUs get huge gains. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, for those of you who followed the channel, I recently did a video on ASUS confirming that their 400 series motherboards will get updates to support AMD's Ryzen 5000 series. That was shortly after a customer service rep said they wouldn't. Well, we now have confirmation from MSI that their 400 series boards will also support the upcoming Ryzen release. Like ASUS, it does look like all of their 400 series boards will get support, so that means the B450 and X470 chipsets. Also like ASUS, MSI is sticking to the January 2021 date from AMD, which I'm sure is to give them time to integrate the Agisa code when AMD gives it to them. Either way, this definitely makes me happy that I suggest motherboards like MSI's X470 Gaming Plus Max. And if you want to catch up on my other hardware suggestions, make sure to visit kit.co slash gamermelt, where I give you my personal suggestions based on what component type you're looking for. I also try to keep it up to date as much as I can, so make sure to check back often, especially while Newegg still has some decent deals. Now, one of my suggestions is the RTX 3080, but as many of you know, NVIDIA's RTX 3000 series is practically impossible to find. Well, it may actually be a whole lot worse than we thought. Originally brought to my attention by the Meld Militia, the European retailer ProShop gave us their numbers on the amount of RTX 3000 cards that they ordered versus received or coming in, and things look really bad. Starting things off, we can see that they've ordered thousands of RTX 3070s, yet have only gotten a couple hundred. Of course, the 3070 isn't out yet, so let's look at one that is. As you can see, when it comes to the 3080, things get far worse. The retailer has placed orders for many thousands of cards, yet they've only received a few hundred. In fact, they've already taken orders for thousands of cards. That means if you ordered from a retailer and you haven't gotten your card yet, this is why. And according to ProShop, this does not include orders they had to cancel. Moving on to the RTX 3090, we can see a similar picture, but on a smaller scale as the 3090 is obviously a lot more expensive. At the end of the day, this really looks bad. We can't say for sure whether the issue stems from NVIDIA or board partners, but given NVIDIA themselves haven't been in stock either, it's probably coming from the GPUs themselves and not just in making the cards. Hopefully as NVIDIA ramps up production, this can be eliminated quickly, but at this rate, it's definitely looking like months. Next up for today, video cards just released the first image of Intel's Alder Lake S CPU. Remember that Intel's Alder Lake will be the first desktop CPU to include the big dot little design similar to ARM. Of course, I'm just curious as to how it'll impact desktop workloads. With that said, the biggest thing about Alder Lake is that it's set to be the first 10 nanometer desktop CPU. That's right, Infinity seemingly does come to an end as the company has finally moved away from their aging 14 nanometer process. Moving back to the image, you can see that Video Cards essentially confirms the LGA 1700 socket, and based on the image, Intel will be moving to a rectangular socket design. Interestingly, while we just got confirmation from Intel that their Rocket Lake processors will be coming in the first quarter of next year, we know they plan to release Alder Lake in the second half of next year. According to Video Cards, it'll be closer to the fourth quarter. That is, if Intel doesn't have any more delays. Lastly for today, we have a huge story on AMD's next-gen Ryzen 5000 CPUs, so let's just get right to it. The story comes from a leaked slide originally shared by the Turkish site Technopat. As you can see, the slide is regarding memory overclocking on Ryzen 5000 CPUs, and in the slide it mentions the relationship between the memory clock, memory controller clock, and Infinity Fabric clock. For those who don't know, AMD's Infinity Fabric is the interconnect that combines their chiplets for a multi-chip module design. That means anytime one chiplet speaks to another, including the I.O. die, it does so on the Infinity Fabric. And like previous generations, according to this, the fabric and memory clocks are in a one-to-one -one relationship, which means the higher the memory clock, the higher the Infinity Fabric is clocked. 
Well, what's incredible is that in the slide, AMD claims Ryzen 5000 can overclock to a good DDR4-4000 similar to Ryzen 3000 getting to 3800. That means, given we're also talking the Infinity Fabric here, we could be looking at a good 2GHz Infinity Fabric or more. Remember that memory effectively gets double the transfers per clock, so 4000 is really 2GHz. Either way, that's a good 1 to 200 MHz higher than Ryzen 3000's Infinity Fabric, and if it's anything like Renoir, it may be able to go even higher. According to the slide, memory and Infinity Fabric overclocks give you the best return on investment for overclockers. Of course, with Ryzen 5000 moving to an 8-core module, we'll have to see how much 8-core chips benefit from an Infinity Fabric overclock. If you're interested in stuff like that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for next-gen Ryzen or are you just waiting for RTX 3000 cards to be in stock? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!